What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Elden Ring. I've been talking about this playthrough for quite a bit now, and I am so excited to bring this to you guys. Cannot wait to dive back into Elden Ring. Uh, I've played this game twice. Did it, um, or I, I played New Game and New Game Plus on PS5, and it was fantastic. I had a great time with it. And I am excited to dive back into it, especially for the DLC that is coming out next month. Um, yeah, uh, can't wait. We're starting just in time. Um, currently, at the date of recording, the DLC drops in exactly one month and two days. So hopefully by then I will be um, far enough into the game to um, to initiate the DLC and um, and see what it has in store for us. I plan on doing a lot of things that I may not need to do um, just for the sake of I do thoroughly like exploring and collecting everything that I can in this game, um, regardless if I've already 100% beaten this game and got a platinum trophy, all that good stuff. Um, that all aside, yeah, I still plan on doing everything. We're going to hit all the dungeons. We're going to hit all the legendary dungeons, everything. We're going to do as much as we can. I'm going to try to get as many of the items in the overworld as I can. But if there are certain items that I've missed because I know that, you know what? Hey, that item up there that I'm going to risk dying for is for a build that's not even mine. Uh, I'm not going to I'm just going to move on by. Probably I do like the challenge that this game brings, but um, but yes, uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited to bring this game to you guys and share it with you, especially being that I am a huge FromSoft fan. I'm very excited to add a FromSoft game to the channel, and I'm glad it's Elden Ring. Maybe one of the next games I'll bring on will be either... Um, it could be either Dark Souls or maybe even maybe even Sekiro. I've been having the desire to play both of those games for quite a bit now. So I don't know. Sekiro is a absolute fucking masterpiece. Love that game. Um, but it's a that's a tough game. So maybe we'll add that later. We'll see. Dark Souls is just a classic. So that's a high contender. But anywho, we're here for Elden Ring. So let's dive in to Elden Ring. Um, our starting class is going to be the Vagabond. Um, I'm probably going to start doing more of a dex build at first, to, especially because I do tend to like dex weapons. Um, so I'll probably start pushing dex real early. And then once um, once I start getting decks high enough, I'll start pushing strength and become more of a quality build. I do tend to favor that play style in, um, in the Souls-like games. But then later in the game, I usually start dumping some stats into intelligence. And I do like to end up being like a quality spell sword. And honestly, it becomes fucking devastating. If you like, you don't need to have a whole lot invested. Um, but if uh, <clears throat> if you if if you get a decent amount of intelligence to where you can use uh, buffs and whatnot, it magic's actually pretty fucking strong in this game. So I mean, it, it, the only thing it's not really strong against is uh, um, dragons dragons you know lightning all day <clears throat> but we're also going to do a mild bleed build um i'm pretty much probably gonna replicate my same build that i did last time but i'm gonna try to bring intelligence in a little earlier than i did um 
but basically our main weapons are going to be the Uchi Katana and the Bloodhound Fang and um and then whatever spells I decide to equip after that. Um but yeah, we're gonna be starting with the Vagabond class as that does give us the best uh starting uh starting stats and abilities. So um so that's the class that we'll be starting with. You I could do other classes for what I'm trying to do. Like, you know, you could start with the samurai because I get I automatically start with higher decks, have the same intelligence and strength. But um, but my vigor is not as high, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. The vigor is not as high. So I'll have a little more health, and plus the Vagabond class starts with a 100% damage reduction shield. So that is what I tend to favor. Um, but that is... Oop. But that is what we're going to be going with. Um, I'm not going to really worry about doing any character customization or building because honestly, you don't really see your character and once you throw a helmet on, you never see your face again and you're always behind your character. The cutscenes are not, they're not, you know, this game's not Mass Effect or Fable or any of those games where making your character and seeing your character on the on the screen is actually a very big thing. You know, like th this game's not that, you know, so I'm not going to worry about customization. Now, if I was playing Mass Effect or something like that, I might consider it. <laughs> but I'm terrible at character creation. I usually just try to pick some other person and um, And just replicate them. My watch is going off. The dogs are outside. The great Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the land. is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden their newfound strength triggered the shattering all of these are bosses that we will fight later a war from which no lord arose oh man millennia she's a, a tough one leading to abandonment I'll discuss my strategy for her later. Oh, rise right now, now ye, ye tarnished. tarnished. Mm. Ye dead, who yet live. Let's go, tarnished. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Or alone. Chieftain of the Badlands. He's a tough fight. The ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion. The loathsome Dung Eater. 
and Sir Gideon Othnir, the all-knowing. Buried with all those ears around him. <laughs> would again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring And we... become the Elden Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we will become the Elden Lord. Pretty much tutorial area. I think you do. You can come back here later, if I remember correctly. First things first. That's gotta go. Makes you way overweight. Um. <clears throat> but first things first, we gotta go fight the gold scion. Um, and it's just the tutorial boss. It's just like every FromSoft game, you're meant to die, no matter what. So you can run off a cliff, you can try to fight and die, do whatever you want. Um, but even if you beat him, the only thing you really get is some crappy shield and sword. So it's not really too worth your time. Ooh. Got my ass. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna still fight him just for fun. Ooh. Well, I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not really meant to live, so you just go die and move on. <laughs> I torrent. Our trusty companion. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order.
Nice. Got our flask. And we are officially in the lands between and ready to start playing. That is something we will get much later. Or not much later, but <clears throat> you got to go down to the beach off the cliff. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get to. But we're going to do the Cave of Knowledge and refresh ourselves on how to play this game. But also get some quick and easy runes. fruit stuff we're gonna need later that way we can feed torrent keep them healthy come on bud do something do it oh I <sighs> Quick and easy runes. Pretty much the only reason to run through here and get these runes from all these guys is just so you can buy the um, the crafting pouch from Kale as soon as you can. Some people say the crafting mechanic in this game is just not worth it and doesn't really do shit, but I disagree. There are some very good items that you can craft. Um, mainly I like to craft the throwing darts, no matter which ones. They're all very useful, but, um, one thing that, uh, ooh, my bad. Um, I can't believe people die to him. You just fuck him up and move on. Um, anywho. What was I saying? <laughs> um, shit, I totally blanked out and forgot what I was saying. Oh, um, the... So I like to make the, the throwing darts. They're really good for pulling enemies individually out of groups. There's nothing worse than getting ganged up on by a bunch of enemies. We need the stone, stone sword key for that. We'll get that later. Um, but getting ganged up on by a bunch of enemies, it's not fun. So what you do is you use the throwing darts to pull individual enemies out of a group. Um, I also like to do it with a bow. Bows in this game are actually pretty strong as a tool. I don't I don't like using them for soul combat, but as a tool, they're fucking fantastic. Ah, Limgrave. I remember the first time I walked out here, it was just so nice. I was just like, wow, this feels a lot like Dark Souls, where, like, once you get to the Firelink Shrine, you start looking around, and you're like, wow, 
this world feels big. It feels vast. And this game captured that essence as well. Very, very good. I mean, look at how far you can see in this game. The detail, the things you see in the distance. I mean, there's Storm Veil up there. It's just lots of shit you can see. So this game did a very good job of capturing that vast world feeling that Dark Souls is usually pretty known for, or Soul From Soft, Soulsborne, all that good stuff. So, but let's talk to um, Fare. Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring. Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Sir, I have without maidens, guidance, thank you. Without the strength of runes, it's insulting to say that I'm maidenless. To the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Hmm. Friendly. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope. For even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path. That stuff right there. Must travel. Hmm. Indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff. The home Up of there. the decrepit demigod, Godric the Drafty. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale on the cliff, where Grace would guide you if you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. All right. Onward we go. So, this is the Golden Sentinel. He is way over leveled for our current level. And I'm going to steer clear the fuck away from him for now. The first time I played this game, I was like, oh, look at him. I'm going to go fight him. Yeah, that was a bad, bad idea. Hang on. Oh, dumb. I thought it was a skull. Um, you'll find skulls on the ground, and if you break them, sometimes you can get uh, golden runes out of them. Mainly at night, it's best to do it, because at night, the ones that actually have golden runes in them, those ones actually glow. Santa Claus Kale! And then I'm not going to use that smithing stone at all to upgrade any of this equipment because this equipment is trash to me. You're tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people. Selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. You know, if you can spare the rooms, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. See? A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really if you intend to survive out here for any duration. 
The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every customer counts, after all. Yep, and so right over here is the crafting kit. Go ahead and do that. And also, while we're at it, we're gonna get a torch. I'm glad you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. Torches are good to have because um, when we go into caves and whatnot, we will need a way to obviously illuminate it. But the problem is, is that we don't have access to the lantern yet, and we won't get the lantern till we get to the Weeping Peninsula. So. So, like, see how this one's glowing? Damn it. There we go. Golden rune. Good to have. These animals right here. Good harvest for thin beast bones. So that way we can make throwing darts. Homeboy here. Ooh. I thought he died on that third hit. <laughs> I looked away because I figured he died. Come here. These things too. But what we're going to do is we're going to get some thin beast bones for crafting. Ooh, these guys. These guys are pains in the ass. But if you're quick. Ooh. There we go. Nice. And yeah, when you do kill groups, you get your um, your flask back. Not all the time, but m pretty much most of the time. Those are good for making arrows. We're just gonna run around, do some killing and harvesting. So that way, next time on the next episode, we will have some items to actually use and start getting some progression on. There's a scarab over here. If you kill that, you get your, uh, oops. Um, you'll restore your uh, your flask. Whatever. You guys got lucky. I really love the fact that there's a jump in this game. Hey. Another golden rune. Beat your ass down. Dun dun, dun dun. Uh, right up the, right up the butt. Ooh, Kukrai, nice. root resin got this dickhead over here take that take that in that posture. Mm. 
lots of materials to gather. We're just gonna get the things that are in our relative close vicinity. Ah, oh, I missed. Totally whiffed that, but oh well. These little fuckers are fast. <laughs> but anywho. So going to crafting now. Yep. All of those. Very, very useful. And then go ahead and make some of these for later. Gonna need those for torrent. And yeah, we'll rest up real quick. I don't think Kale has anything else that we need. Well, you're back. Care to buy something? Um, telescope's really not that needed. Um. That these things are good, but I really don't feel like spending Goodbye. the runes. So we will save our runes until the next episode. We're going to wrap things up right here. Next time when we come back, we're going to hit our first dungeon and just keep exploring and all that good stuff. Elden Ring is a vast world and we've got a lot of exploring to do. So I will see you all next time with some more Elden Ring.